Let's take a look at our filtration membrane inside these kidneys and nephrons. Now remember this filtration membrane is where some of the plasma is allowed to leave the cardiovascular system and enter these nephron tubes. So when we look at this filtration membrane, start with that glomerulus. That's that capillary that filtration happens across its wall. Now this glomerulus is a capillary and like other capillaries, its wall is made up of endothelial cells. Remember that just means a simple squamous, one flat epithelial layer. Nothing surprising or different about it. But these little simple squamous epithelial cells in the glomerulus, they got tiny little gaps in between them. That's what the fenestra are. So that's gonna make this capillary a little bit more porous than what most in the body are, because most of them don't have these little gaps and spaces. So you're gonna see plasma escaping the blood through this capillary wall. And there's some other things around it adding to this membrane, but they're gonna get out of the blood and they're gonna get into these nephrons and that's when we're gonna call it filtrate at that point right there. But let's look also in addition to the fenestra, you also have superficial to them filtration slits. Now these are tiny little gaps and spaces in between these cell processes of these cells called podocytes. Now these podocytes are epithelial cells. They're gonna grow and wrap around these glomerular capillaries. And they're gonna have all these extensions that go out in different directions and they're gonna sort of grow together, sort of like you put your fingers together, where you get tiny little spaces in between them. So that's gonna make up part of this mechanical filter too. But if you look at everything in that filtration membrane, the capillary endothelial wall, the simple squamous epithelial layer with the holes in it, the basement membrane, which is around these epithelial cells, where most epithelial cells will have a basement membrane around them. And then you got the podocytes, little cells growing around those. So all of these are gonna to help to hold back the large things in the blood, because those are really good, useful materials you don't wanna be losing in the urine. So inside of this capillary called the glomerulus is where we have our first stage of urine formation. That's where the filtration takes place. And as some of that plasma gets through these tiny little holes and spaces, they're gonna collect in the Bowman's capsule, which is the first part of the nephron right there. But if you look at how that glomerulus receives blood, it's through an afferent arteriole with an A at the front of it. A lot of that blood's gonna leave through an efferent arteriole. It's got an E at the front of it right there. Now these have smooth muscle around them for vasoconstriction and dilation, just like we see in many other places of the body. Something else we're going to look at here is the juxtaglomerular apparatus, the site of renin production. Now, renin's a kidney produced here in the kidneys. Renin has control over aldosterone, excuse me, angiotensin 1, then angiotensin 2, and then aldosterone production. So in short, without this renin, we wouldn't have aldosterone. And remember, aldosterone is one of those hormones targets the kidneys. One thing it tells them to do is reabsorb in whole water. It has a lot to do with our blood pressure. So inside this juxtaglomerular apparatus, you got these juxtaglomerular cells, a ring of smooth muscle cells bound around that afferent arteriole, right there where it comes close to that Bowen's capsule. We also have these macula densa cells, specialized cells of the distal tubule. Remember, that's just one part of the nephron there. This lies in between that afferent and afferent arteriole. And then what leaves the blood at the glomerulus is picked up by a second capillary. So what you're gonna do is let some material, some of the plasma, get out of your blood at the glomerulus. This nephron is gonna have that material in it. That's what the filtrate is. Again, you call the watery stuff in the blood plasma, move some of it into the nephrons, you're gonna call it filtrate. Those epithelial cells making those nephrons are gonna reabsorb most of this stuff back into the interstitial spaces. And a second capillary network called the paratubular gets it right back into the blood. So you're gonna let a little of the plasma get out of the blood at the glomerulus, and you're gonna put most all of it right back into the blood at the paratubular capillaries. We'll have pictures of those further along. But looking at nephron histology, at the Bowman's capsule, the first part of the nephron, this is a simple squamous epithelial layer. Remember, inside this Bowman's capsule is the glomerulus. That's where the filtration happens. So as some of that watery stuff in the blood, some of the tiny dissolved materials gets out through those holes, 
the Bowman's capsule is going to catch it. It's just a collecting space that catches all of that material, which we're now going to call filtrate. After the Bowman's capsule, you're going to move in the next part of the nephron called the proximal convoluted tubule. So here these cells are simple cuboidal. They have got many, many microvilli and lots of mitochondria to make them very active. Remember, microvilli increase surface area. Anywhere you want to do a lot of absorption or secretion, you're going to need these. 65% of all that filtrate gets reabsorbed back into the body at this proximal tubule region. There's a lot of reabsorption going on there. After the proximal tubule are the loops of Henle, which go down deep into the medulla. There are lots of solutes there, and those solutes pull water out of this loop. So on average, around another 15% reabsorption occurs in the loop of Henle. And the loop actually has different parts to it, too. There are descending parts and ascending parts. Parts where the loop goes down into the medulla, and then it comes back up ascending. You'll also see thick and thin portions of the loop. Where they're thick, the cells are cuboidal. Where they're thin, they're squamous and flat. Then after the loops of Henle, you'll run into the distal tubule. This is a little shorter section than the others. Here the cells are cuboidal, but on average around 19% reabsorption occurs here. <clears throat> and at this distal tubule, in some degree the collecting ducts after them, this is where the hormones that target the kidneys work. Hormones like ADH, aldosterone, and ANH, which we've talked about before in other videos. But notice if you add your percents up, 65, 15, and 19, that's 99%. It's actually more than that, but we're just rounding off. So that shows you less than 1% of everything going into these nephrons is generally lost. Most of that material gets reabsorbed. So again, here's an afferent arteriole coming into the glomerulus, and there's the afferent taking it back out. Notice that leads over to the paratubular capillary later. But again, you're going to let some of the plasma escape through those fenestra holes. Then it's called filtrate, as soon as it's in that Bowman's capsule right there. There's the first process that has to happen, filtration. Now again, you go through the rest of the nephron after the Bowman's capsule, almost all the energy will be put into reabsorption. Just about everything going into this Bowman's capsule is good, useful material. So these cells are going to expend a lot of energy to reabsorb it back into the interstitial spaces. In the second capillary, called the paratubular, will pick it right back up. You're just going to take some plasmin material out of the blood here, put almost all of it right back into the blood at your second capillary network. But the cells do secrete some material into the inside of the tube again to the inside of the nephron, but anything that stays in this nephron here is going out of the body is what we call urine. So there's your kidney picture again and the study guides too.